Just no way. Just no way we're supposed to live in this godforsaken state. This place is a shithole. Yeah, I just want to talk to him. No, put him on the phone. I hear him back there. God, I hear... Don't, no, don't put me on hold the end. I need to talk to him directly. No, this ain't right. No, I need to talk... I need to speak to somebody directly. The scorching hot Dallas Mavericks offseason continues, ladies and gentlemen. It's as hot as the Texas weather outside. <laughs> we're so f***ing back. It hurts. Yesterday, it was announced that the Dallas Mavericks will be signing Derek Jones Jr. to a one-year minimum contract, I believe, is, is the terms of the deal. Derek Jones Jr. is a member of the Mavs. Twitter has wanted this guy for the last 10-plus years, it feels like. All-star team. In fact, just a few years ago, when the Miami Heat were trying to make space to sign Jimmy Butler, it was reported that the Dallas Mavericks were trading for Derrick Jones Jr. Then it turns out the Mavericks didn't realize what the full package was, and they didn't actually do the deal because they're so... <sighs> I'm being nice today. I'm actually being nice, so let me chill out. So anyways, it's only fitting that Derrick Jones Jr. finally makes his way to the Dallas Mavericks, and I absolutely love this move for the Mavs. I'll explain why I love this move specifically later in the video. At the end of the video, I'll touch on why I love this offseason so much for the Mavericks, why it is such a win for me, and while for some people out there, I've seen it, some people out there who think the Mavs haven't done enough or they really need to make a move for a center, why I think this offseason sets them up so incredibly perfectly moving forward. Now let's just do a quick little recap of what went down this offseason, okay? New players entering the fold. Derek Lively and Omax Prosper. Draft picks. First round picks. Rookies. Love it. Young guys. Love to see young guys on the basketball court. Seth Curry. Welcome back. Third time with the team. Grant Williams. You're welcome. You're welcome. Hold the applause, guys. Hold the applause. I'm, hold the applause. I'm trying to record a video. Dante Exum. Okay. Uh, Rashawn Holmes. And now Derek Jones Jr. It's a nice little cast there of, of new characters. Now, let's look at the players the Mavericks lost this offseason, or players who haven't technically been lost yet, but will more than likely not be with the team on opening night. Christian Wood. Listen, guys, I'm done crying over spilt milk, okay? I have still I still see people crying over this, man. Enough. Get off your knees. It's embarrassing what we're talking about, okay? God bless you, Christian Wood. Good luck wherever you may end up. Justin Holliday, Frank Nilakina. JaVel McGee, he's currently on the roster, but all signs point towards his exodus. Markeith Morris, McKinley Wright, Davis Bertans, Theo Pinson, Reggie Bullock. Go ahead and take a look at these guys. This is, this is, these are guys who are out there on the floor a good amount last year. Let that sink in. Again, God bless these guys. You know, thank you for your contributions. Reggie Bullock, I will legitimately miss your services. I liked you a lot as a player. Thought you were tough. Thought your shooting was was clutch at times. Seemed like a really good dude. I liked what you brought to the table, but it was time to rip the band-aid off. I mean, just looking at this on paper, this has been a huge offseason for the Dallas Mavericks. They've gotten better. And more importantly, I think, they've gotten younger. They've gotten more athletic. They've gotten more versatile. And a guy who fits that mold is Derrick Jones Jr., who is still somehow only 26 years old. Derrick Jones Jr. is one of these players who feels like they're 33 years old, but then you check their basketball reference and realize, holy shit, this guy is several years younger than I am. Let me talk about why I like Derrick Jones Jr. so much as a player, why I like the signing for the Mavericks, why so many Mavericks fans were basically on their hands and knees begging for Derrick Jones over the last few years, and why I've seen many Chicago Bulls fans upset that he is leaving. First and foremost, let's just get this out of the way, okay? Offensively, don't expect much. He's not a guy who's going to have the ball in his hands very often. In fact, Andre Drummond is the only player on the Chicago Bulls who averaged fewer touches per game than Derrick Jones Jr. He's not going to break guys down off the dribble. He's not going to be some pick-and-roll ball handler. He's not going to create offense for others. His offense gets created for him. 80% of his shots last season came off of assists, and 60% of his shots last season came at the rim. But I think this is perfectly fine next to a guy like Luka Doncic and next to another guy who's a very capable playmaker like Kyrie Irving. See, in preparation for this, I went back and I watched four Chicago Bulls games from last season and just watched Derrick Jones Jr. the entire time. Did not keep my eyes off of him. He is an unbelievably smart cutter. I think he enters the team immediately, the best cutter the team has. It's timely. It's smart. It's, you know, it's perfectly timed every single time. He's got good hands and he's an incredibly explosive athlete, finishes above the rim with the best of them. This will be a really nice addition on a Mavericks team that just doesn't really have this. Like last season, 
their best cutter was Josh Green, and I think he's really like the only guy fully capable of cutting at a high level. On top of being a very good cutter, he's a very formidable lob threat. And this goes back to his first years in the league with Miami, with Portland, with Chicago. They use him as a screener and he rolls to the rim and you throw that thing up, he's gonna catch it and he's gonna throw it down. And playing next to a guy like Luka Doncic, who is quite possibly the best pick and roll ball handler in the NBA, oh, he's gonna get quite a bit of opportunities when he's on the floor. And perhaps the most exciting thing to me is the Bulls got out in transition more when Derek Jones Jr. was on the floor, again, He's a superb athlete. He's going to run the floor. It's going to give the Mavericks more opportunities to get out and transition, something that they've desperately been needing to do over the last few years. And I don't know if it's a personnel thing, why they don't do it. I think it has more to do with Luka Doncic wanting to play at a very, very slow pace, which is fine in some instances. And in some instances, they need to get the ball up the fucking floor. They just need to. So hopefully Derek Jones Jr.'s addition is going to help tremendously in that department. But what makes this move so exciting to me is his defense. Derek Jones Jr. is a very, very good defender. And what makes his defense so good, quite frankly, is his versatility, is his ability as a team defender. He was 99th percentile in defensive versatility last year, according to Basketball Index. The Chicago Bulls defense was three and a half points per 100 possessions better when he was on the court. And, you know, he's got some shot blocking prowess. He's a pretty good help side defender. One and a half blocks per 75 possessions and opponent shot one percentage points worse at the rim when defended by Derrick Jones Jr. He is a good one-on-one -on -one defender, and you'll see that when you go back and watch Chicago Bulls games. When he's on the floor, he's more than likely guarding the other team's best player. And that can range from a number of different positions. He's usually not going to get stuck on a guard, but he'll guard the other team's best wing nine times out of ten. And the other one time, he's playing small ball five. The Bulls utilized him quite a bit as the small ball center, and their defense was really solid whenever he was playing that position. But the thing that stuck out to me the most, and the thing I'm most excited about, I'm going to touch on this more in a second, he's a very good team defender. He's smart. He's good at switches. He's good at getting over screens. He's good at getting back to cover his man. He's good at digging when he's at, when he's at the elbow, and he's one pass away. He's smart in passing lanes. He's a very, very good team defender. I'm going to throw some clips together of some of my favorite Derek Jones Jr. defensive moments over the few games that I watched. YouTube, don't you dare copyright me for this. Don't you even think about it, mister. I mean, uh -huh. I mean, in the NBA, I mean, that was just well-known, well-documented. Parker and Ginobili right at the forefront. Just the eight for San Antonio. Well, nice defense. play, Derek Jones. Oh, of course, Jakob Pertl was part of the Kawhi DeRozan deal as well. Oh, Jones from the backside. Oh, good block, good defense. Finch mismatch, there comes the double. Jones oh. was cutting, but the pass off target. Wow, they're one of the most talented teams in the Eastern Conference. But what is the identity and how are you going to approach each game regardless of the level of opponent in your estimation? Oh, nice move. Johnson got it off to Collins, missed the hook. And even though he probably wanted to support Joel, well, he made sure to shout out the other guys who were in the race too. He's savvy, right? <laughs> he, it's not his first rodeo. He's been around, so he knows you're not going to get him to say something he doesn't want. But at the same time, he'll share his thoughts with you. Dezumu ahead of everyone. It initially lost the ball and they kept on feeding him back until he finished it off. Jones Jr. Yeah, to hard. Back to Embiid. That's a foul. Oh my goodness. Yeah. James to the cup. Swatted away. Shot clock at two. Harris. And got himself an easy dunk. After a sluggish start, to say the least, and a red-hot Boston beginning, the Bulls are back within one after trailing by 19. Tatum throws it away. Horford got it. Late in the clock, it's Brogdon to Hauser. Hoist one up and another. Yep. Brogdon on Caruso, knocked away by Jones. He was a big reason why the Bulls made a comeback today. White, defended by Jones. Caruso the rebound. And a reason why I find the team defense aspect so exciting is, one, team defense is incredibly important. I, in fact, I think individual defense, one-on-one -on -one defense, has become a little overrated in today's NBA. It's much better and more important, I think, to be a very, very good team defender. Why this makes me so excited is it feels like the Mavericks have made a concerted effort this offseason to go back to what was working two years ago when they were a top 10 defense 
inexplicably. Nobody expected that. They came out of the gates firing in 2021, 2022. Feels like 10 years ago already. I can't believe it was only two years ago. This team was really good. They were a great defensive team. Everybody on the team played within the system. Everybody was versatile. They were good at switching. They were good at communicating. They were flying all over the court. Now, for some reason, that got lost this past season. I don't know what it is. Dorian Finney-Smith definitely took a little bit of a step back as a defender as he got older and as he was coming off of just an insane playoff run where he was asked to do everything defensively. Same can be said with Reggie Bullock. Luka Doncic was, I'm just going to be frank, the worst I've ever seen him defensively in the back half of the season last year. I don't know what the exact reason was, but the team just went away from what worked two years ago. And now it feels like they're getting back to that. Like every, like every, Let's look at some of the players they picked up. Derek Jones Jr., who I just mentioned. Very versatile, very good team defender, smart, plays well within a system. Grant Williams, very, very good team defender. Again, a good individual defender, but a versatile guy who can guard fives, can guard fours, can guard threes, can do pretty much whatever you need him to do defensively on the basketball court. And they drafted a guy in the first round, Omax Prosper, who I think is going to be a tremendous defender in this league. Shapes up to be a really, really strong individual defender with his skills and his size and his athleticism. But I also think he's going to be a very, very smart team defender. And again, a guy who can guard several different positions and do whatever he needs to do on the basketball court. And let's not forget Dante Exum. Defense was his calling card and he's on the roster. So it just excites me thinking of the possibilities of a lineup that includes Luka Doncic, who has a seven foot wingspan. Like this needs to be talked about more. The fact that this guy does have a seven-foot wingspan. He should at least, bare minimum, be an okay team defender guy. Kyrie at the two, Josh Green at the three, and then Grant Williams and Derek Jones Jr. at the four and five. And whoever's playing small ball five is playing small ball five. That gives you a very versatile lineup. A lineup that shoots well, a lineup that runs the floor, a lineup that gives you a lob threat in Derek Jones Jr. and a cutting threat in Derek Jones Jr. And four very capable passers in Luka, Josh Green, Kyrie, and Grant Williams. That makes me excited. I don't know how much we're going to see it. I just want to say this up front. I don't know how much we're going to see Derek Jones Jr. playing. It seems like this is 11th, 12th guy in the rotation type of thing. But with injuries and with guys not playing well, you know, it's, it's very possible that he sneaks his way into the rotation as like a 15, 16, 17 minute per game guy. So this is why I love this offseason for the Mavs. I think it's been tremendous. This is a really, really good pickup. A one-year minimum deal for a guy like Derrick Jones Jr. is a fucking home run. I love it. Great job, Nico. Now, let me address something else because I've seen a lot of people saying this on Twitter. For some reason, it's typically European fans, and I, I get it. Like, there's they're, they're in a rush to get Luka a championship right now. They don't give a shit what it looks like. They don't give a shit where it is, right? They don't care about the team-building aspect of things. They just want to see it now. And those are the fans who desperately want a center. And listen, I want the Mavericks to go out and get a center too, like a well-established center. I like Derek Lively a lot. I just don't know how ready he's going to be immediately. So I would like for them to go out and get, you know, a Clint Capella or a Jared Allen, whoever might be available on the market. But here's here's my final place. I think this is where I'm at with the offseason moving forward, regardless of what happens. I think this is an A offseason for the Mavericks. I don't know if I can go A plus yet just because, again, they didn't get that center that I wanted, but I'm still okay with it. But I'm going A because they've set themselves up incredibly well moving forward. Incredibly well. I don't think they're an inner circle contending team this upcoming season. I think that they're an outer circle contending team because, you know, you make the playoffs and have a guy like Luka Doncic on your roster. Anything can happen. We've seen that already throughout his young career. But by getting better this offseason, by getting younger this offseason, you now open up the doors to say, okay, maybe this year's not championship or bust. Like, that's going to sound hard to hear, but this year doesn't have to be championship or bust for the Mavericks. You still have Luke under contract. You just gave Kyrie a three-year deal. You can wait this thing out to the trade deadline. You could save your trade assets, see who becomes available at the deadline, make your move then. You can wait until the summer. I, I know that sounds hard. It's hard to be patient, but you can wait until next summer and then parlay all your assets to make the big push, the big trade that really sets your team up moving forward. Because in order to contend, they are going to need that center. And it's going to happen one or two ways. One, Derek Lively has a Walker Kessler, Jalen Duran, Mark Williams-esque rookie season where he looks much more advanced than we were all thinking. And, you know, we could pencil him in as a legitimate rotation guy by the end of his rookie season and especially moving into a sophomore year. Or Derek Lively looks like the project a lot of people think he's going to be. And you're going to have to go out and get that center that you're going to plug in, whether it's a huge, gigantic name or, you know, a top 15 center guy. But either way, I think you've set yourself up incredibly well to go and do that. This is a deep team. I, go back to the start of the video and look at the guys I said left the team. 
Like, go back and look at that. I mean, we're, God bless these guys. Justin Holliday, Frank Nielakina, JaVel McGee, Mark, Markeith Morris, McKinley Wright, Davis Bertans, Dale Pinto. Like, these were guys who were playing last year. I'm not frozen. I'm in disbelief that I just uttered those names. Either way, a tremendous offseason for the Mavericks. I, I, I haven't really sat down and thought about this. I think they've probably had the best offseason in the NBA, or at least up there. Right? I mean, they've done a tremendous job. Again, not only getting better, because just on paper, they are objectively better than they were last season as a roster, but getting younger at the same time, that's masterful stuff. That's very, very difficult to do for a contending team that did not have a lot of assets heading into the offseason. So I think the front office has done a tremendous job. Of course, it ha we have to see it play out. But the process and everything so far has looked great. Hopefully they don't embarrass us. But what, who are we kidding? We're Dallas sports fans.